Everyone has uh, uh, idea about uh, HTML and all. Anyone who is not aware of this basic technology, let me know on the chat window. John, Sachin, Santos, Stephania. Okay, so uh, no one has given the answer, so I hope uh, that everyone knows about it. Yep, that's great. So, purpose and structure. So, see, this is a diagram about how your web application works. Web client. Web client is your browser. So, whenever you say google.com, it sends a request which we call it as a HTTP request and create object we will see that later on it send it to your server and calls the web resource so web resource is this your web component it could be a servlet it could be a JSP HTML or a lot of other technology resources and depend on like if you have just asked for the basic web page like first time you say that uh, gmail.com it just give you a basic web page and it does not need to connect to the database and once you add your login and password you are again calling some servlet here that login and password which you have entered will be uh, verified with the database and finally you will get an output on your client browser that's how this uh, thing works let me on the chat window if everyone is clear about this diagram before I start doing that uh, uh, demonstration, writing a program on it. Everybody understood this diagram? Any problems on it? Clear? Great. Okay. Now, so how do things work? So what is a deployment script? You must have seen when you are looking for a topic in a book, what do you normally do? What about Java Beans there? It's uh, Java Beans basically you can use some Pojo kind of thing to pass from the messages some way. Java Beans like suppose you have got a employee object which you got uh, in a tuple format in the database. You got it and uh, you want to store it into some bean. Bean is nothing but kind of a pojo. So that pojo you can pass from one uh, page to another page. For example, uh, when you say, uh, suppose you are logging to oracle.com and uh, first time you log in and after that you, you know, doesn't matter how many pages you browse at the okay, let me so at every page it will say hi Santosh, hello Santosh, something like this. So on each and every page. So that value has been stored into some variable normally or it could be in an object format. And in Java you know that everything that we pass is in the form of an object. So that object of uh, your ID has been passed from one page to another page. So that value remains stored somewhere. So what is the difference between EJB or Broly? That is out of the scope of demo, but let me explain. EJB has uh, session beams. Uh, you can use uh, separate session beams like stateful and stateless, depend on your requirement. Uh, State uh, full beans are normally used uh, for uh, uh, you know e-commerce and banking websites where uh, something needs to be purchased and you want to store that data. And simple Java beans is just a pojo, plain old Java object. So you store it and you can use it anywhere. Session, but EJB session beans, message driven beans are for some specific purpose. Simple Java bean is just to create our object and pass it from one page to another page so that you can use what value which you have received on first page, you can use it on any page. Is that clear, Santos, Ishan? Okay, great. 
So here, here when you say deployment descriptor, deployment descriptor uh, you must have seen like when you create a, when you create uh, suppose sorry, when you are want to read some topic in a book, normally what you do, you always uh, you know look at the index page, which is your content page. And on that content page, you try to look for the topic which you want to read. If that is there on the page, uh, on the content page, you you probably get a page number. You directly go to that page and read the topic out. And if uh, sometimes it could happen that uh, that topic may be there in the book, but it is not mentioned in your index page. Do you really go to each and every page and find out does my topic is available in the book? Do you do that ever? That's a question for you. Do you do that? No, absolutely no. So deployment descriptor in web application is just like your index page. That's the analogy which we are creating. So whenever a client requests for some page, your web server or application server try to look into that deployment descriptor. Uh, de that deployment descriptor, that's a file which is web.xml. And if your servlet or whatever page is available there, then only it will go further and give you the page. Otherwise, it will say, sorry, uh, the page which you are looking for is not available in our web application. Am I clear on what this uh, deployment descriptor does? Yeah, great. So, but I heard that 3.0 have annotation means that servlets are not defined. Exactly. Now, uh, that's a pretty good question. So, Jishan, uh, you know, we are shifting here from Java E5, uh, which was uh, servlet 2.5 version. And in that servlet 2.5 version, there was no annotation available. Up to Java E5, no annotation. So now in uh, Java E6, as you rightly said, uh, which is servlet 3.0, have annotation also available. Plus, it uh, as compared to the backward compatibility, that old deployment descriptor is still available. So, uh, you know, uh, when you say web.xml, yes, we do not mention there when we are using annotation but it still creates the uh, annotation structure there. Is the annotation are the replacement of a uh, uh, web page? No, not at all. There are, uh, so you cannot do each and everything with the annotation. Only few things can be done with the annotation. Some of the things still can be, uh, still need to be done only in web.xml like context parameters or the uh, login uh, config, all those things still happens in web.xml. You cannot define it with the annotation. So there are few things with, for which you still need uh, uh, you know, web.xml. Now, here, so let's start with it. Probably quite less time over here. So let's start with uh, the glyph itself. Then what about the topic finding the example in the book? Means that we have a servlet not defined in DB. So there's a question here. DB and how developers know servlet present in that? Now, in that case, uh, when you say uh, application uh, here, when the application, uh, you know, when the application is deployed, web dot uh, it scans out your container scans out all the annotations and all those things, and on the background it still creates a web dot XML which have every action available. So 
either either you have uh, entered into it or you need to search it. Now let's start with it. Yeah, am I clear here, Dishan? Great. So, uh, so db underscore demo. Now, as as we are discussing the older version here, so anyway, let let it be like this. Sir. Now, as it said uh, in uh, servlet three point zero, it is optional. Depends on if you are if you you are very sure that that dot XML are not going to write anything into it. Uh, in that case, web.xml you may not write, but background is still get created. Uh, if if you want to change something into web.xml, like you want to do something, then uh, you will need web.xml as well. Is is a web server? Is a web server. Tomcat seven point zero is a web server, not app server. App server you have black web logic, web sphere, glassfish. No, no. The web can't see that DB. You need to do a lot of uh, other things before you can see the DB uh, by using the WAP file. So here, let's create a servlet. So here we will create a servlet. Suppose uh, form dot bizlab dot servlet so here we will create a servlet known as my servlet so there is a url mapping lot of other things so we just need a two port method now this, this is the annotation which uh, which is a new feature in java ee6 which we are not doing right now We'll see another way, kind of a backward compatibility if someone is coming from that background. Now here, so we will write a servlet. So now this, you know, whenever a client call for this resource, which is known as my servlet, it need to write some data back onto the browser. So when you say browser, like in SCJP you use system.out, so you will not be using system.out here, so you need to create your own writer. So let's say, uh, so the writer which we say, print writer, uh, maybe out, is equal to response.getWriter, and before that, we need to mention out here, that's what kind of data I'm going to write. So I'll say set content type. I will say text forward slash HTML. So this is the data which we wrote. And now when I say out dot print ln, so I have created the response that which is going to give the data to the user in the form of a text and of course HTML which this is known as, also known as, if someone has heard of, known as mine. And this, I've created a writer, which is going to write it on a browser. So I'll say print ln. What kind of data I'm going to write? Of course, HTML. Uh, here I will write HTML. Add. Maybe title. I and then I'm going to open the for uh, let me close the head here body so here so I will just write some data here maybe at one uh, maybe 
the one and then I'm going to close the body here and also going to close the HTML. So this is the HTML content which will be written back onto the browser, a simple web page. Now let's look, uh, this is a simple servlet. Let's look at the structure of web.xml. This remains uh, normally empty. Well, this is this particular one. Even this is also not wired. This one depends on if you want, you can do it, otherwise it's fine. Now here, when you write something or web app, when you write it out, maybe you can close the box. Necessary is by default. So whenever you start writing it, the top element or you can say the root element is always web hyphen app. So it defines the application which has been created. It is of the uh, web application type. Now let's run this. So let's run this first and see what happens. It says 404 DD demo servlet bizlet servlet could not pop. So it's 404. So the thing over here it says. So here it says that uh, it looks into the web.xml and find out does the my servlet is available in my XML. So this this is your actually index. So you can write it like. You can say index of web application. So this is the index of web application and this content my servlet is not there. So how do you define it? You need to write here first servlet uh, top uh, content. So you write servlet uh, name. Now let's look at one more thing before here. This. Now here, look at this uh, this diagram again. Web client. This is your web server. So in uh, there is one more which is known as a web container. So container, the name which is inside the server, is different from what the client knows. Sometimes the client, uh, the URL which is passes. It may be different for the servlet which is actually exists. So the name could be different. So you say here, uh, maybe any servlet. Uh, you can write currently. Let's write the same name. My servlet. Servlet class. So you need to write down the where my servlet class is present. com dot servlet dot my servlet. This name you can give anything. It's just for the inside the container that what name you do you provide. And after that, now this is for you can see inside the container how it will be known. Inside the container this is a class and inside the container it will be known like my servlet or you can give any other name that you want. Suppose uh, this. Can give any now for the, now there is another thing known as servlet mapping. Servlet mapping is to give the access of this servlet to the outside clients. How you give it? Servlet name it has to be exactly the way uh, the earlier name has been written, and there is something known as URL pattern. So URL pattern you need to provide the forward slash. URL pattern will be used by the client. So you need to provide a forward slash. So you can say uh, maybe abc dot html something like this. You can write whatever name you would like here. Now once I write this, let's run it once again.
Now see this one here. Uh, this is the HTTP 82. This is the server address. Any server it could be. This is my server address. This is my project name, which is also known as the context root. Context means the whole application. What is the root for application? And the what resource we have asked for is abc.html. abc.html, like to the outside world, they will pass the URL like this, abc.html. And that URL, uh, let's look at the diagram. Client will say abc.html, it will come here, look into the container, what is abc.html. And the container says it's actually this. Now it will go to go to servlet and find out the name. There could be many servlet. Find out with the name which is this, and say and ask for that. What is the class name? It says my servlet. Now my servlet get executed, and whatever the output comes out, that will be displayed back to the uh, client browser, which is this one. Am I clear here? Give me on the chat window, please. Yes, great. Stephanie, Shinuvalu, John, Gerald, Bhuvneshwar, Bhushan Kumar. Anubhi, Ambrose. Okay, so Raj Vardhan has, Jay Vardhan has asked a question. Why we have X, M, and S in the web app? Do we always need those information? Will that check in web app? Oh, great. So let's uh, ask this question. Now, here, when I write this, so I get a lot of information. Suppose, This server and server mapping is already there. So there was a lot of other information. This server item is already defined, so that's why you can see it. Uh, let me do one thing. I will uh, maybe like this. I will highlight. I will take this out and put it over here. Do I get anything? So that XML is X actually. That is a DTD which we can uh, where. Uh, the tags information is available. Otherwise, we have to remember each and every tag by ourselves, or we need to have some documentation somewhere. And like if we if we have that information over here, I can easily find out and look for which tag I'm using. Easier to do in that. It depends on if you remember the tag, don't put this information. That's okay. Not necessary. But but if you, if you want to have some help from the uh, Eclipse, in that case, you need you can do it. Probably that will be good for you. Raj Chavadar, is the answer? Is it uh, does your question get answered? Just write it on the chat window. Container doesn't need this. Which one we use for a better either DTD or access I think good. Uh, yeah. Earlier versions there was DTD use, but nowadays it is more of access teams which are getting used. Now you need to check out which version you are using. So in that, according to that, you need to decide also. Uh, Dishan, no, container doesn't need that. It's up to you, just for you to define it. The system will pick up from the server itself. So that's okay with it. It's up to you. Okay, that's our uh, one thing. Any question here apart from this? Any other question? Now, Let's uh, do the other part as well. So let's uh, read 
out. So which is the deployment descriptor here? It is your web.xml. So web application deployment descriptor describes the this one more question come, came out. Uh, what kind of address does URL pattern accept? So one, uh, let me give you uh, some quick answer here. The first thing which is very mandatory is the forward slash. And then you can give anything. Maybe HTML, this one, ABC, your name, that's okay. It does it. But the only thing, only thing mandatory over here is forward slash. If you don't give forward slash here and you try to run this, let's do that. Probably it won't have given you an error for this. Yeah. So here it, it already given you error. Uh, let's uh, look at that error somewhere. Over here. Illegal argument exception, as it clearly says. Now, A, B does not exist or it's not readable. It must have given out. So let's search it out. It says fail to start the component. Here it says, anyway, anyway, this is not going to work. See here. I just saw somewhere. Yeah, yeah. It says invalid URL pattern in the ABC.html because invalid means it does, did not have something known as false slash. Sachin, is the question answered? Jishan, yes. Uh, Jishan, that abc.tap.html, that should be fine. No issue. You can write abc.tap.html. That's fine. Absolutely fine. So which uh, suppose which one uh, to contain a looks first either annotation or web first uh, the first file that get loaded in your uh, system is always web.xml and then the container will find out all other annotations and finally it gets combined all the thing into the web.xml and that's what gets deployed and outside world will look into it. The first file is always web.xml. And but with the container, it combines that annotations because annotation is a you can say kind of alternated that is servlet and servlet mapping combines together. But finally, it gets displayed to the outside world is your web.xml. And web.xml has another one parameter which it says that do you really need to look for the annotation? So the, there you can say yes or no. There's a one more parameter which is discussed in different topics. Am I clear here? So it is up to the web.xml. Does the annotation get read or not? Okay, great. Now, uh, just a quick. And one more thing, one more application. There is one more directory known as lib. So one more directory in the lib. So let's look at the structure over here. This is your main structure. So in web INF, uh, your web.xml, which is a deployment descriptor, is always in the folder known as uh, web INF. So let me show you that also. So it is on the demo folder. And DD demo. Web contains web INF. Web So this is the file which is always in WebINF and make sure that the, your folder name is always capital web hyper hyphen, not any other name. This has to be exactly the same. If you change it, it won't work. And in WebINF, there is a directory known as lib. 
So here you can look at is the lift directory. So whatever jar, maybe you are going to use some external jars. You can copy those jars into that lift directory and you can use that. Maybe I'll have something. Jar file and it is so whatever jar file you if you have created somewhere else, you can import into a lift directory and you can type on this. Now so let's uh, go for this. So Deployment descriptor is your web.xml file. It describes the classes, resources, and configuration of the application. So when the web server receives a request for the application, it uses the deployment descriptor to map the URL of the request, like abc.html earlier, to how to handle the request. So it looks for handle the request means uh, the kind of resource it's looking for. Deployment descriptor is a file known as web.xml. And it resides in a uh, under the web IRF directory as we just saw. And the file XML file whose root element is web.app as we just saw a few minutes ago. The root element for this is web app. This is the sample which we just saw. XML is used to, it depends on you if you want it or not. And this star is important. Star means, uh, you know, like here. Let's run this. This one is okay. And now I say, suppose, uh, you know, some, I change it to maybe tab two, or maybe something else. Thing. It says it does not count. So when you write here as a star. You can have multiple names if you write here. Just do one more thing. Star. Star means anything. So whatever you write on a browser or a browser URL. So here like I, I change it to something. Maybe so that's it. It will also print the same thing. So it works. You change it, refresh it, it works. That means, star means anything you write, it will map onto this servlet, my servlet, because here we have done a setting that star is, whenever you say star, look for the servlet name base, base is my servlet. So execute the servlet and take it out. You must have seen also, you know, when you click on something, if that URL does not exist, so it will take you directly to the index page. It says that maybe page not found. We are taking to your default page, which is index. So you can say that it's an index page. Am I clear on this? Please give me on the chat window. I did not get the jar thing. Okay, Sachin, great. Just uh, give me. Sachin saw that question earlier. Just give me a second, please. Now, jar file is. Uh, Suppose, uh, let me have, suppose I want to connect my system to the database. I will not write the code here for it, but let me show you this. Uh, let me see if I have that. Solar. Debbie client. So Debbie is nothing but a kind of a database. So here, uh, Derby, Derby is a uh, you know database uh, database client part. So whenever I wanted to uh, connect with a database, uh, let's, let me show you this. Build path, configure build path, I'll say library, add the external jar. Just 
So here, just let me see the library. Just refresh it so that you get point. Okay, Java resources here, the library. Uh, did it get added? No. Okay, here it's wblind.jar. Here, let's see how many files we have. So, we have a lot of classes available like client, tool, and all those things. So there are a lot of files available, uh, ready-made classes. If I want to use in my system, in that case, I need to have this jar file within my application. So where you put it, it will be in your web INF listener. Uh, is, is your question answered? It's already in the name. Why do we need to import it? Yeah, exactly. You know, the, what was happened is, you are absolutely right, Sachin. Here I could not able to see that uh, what our files are available here. So in that case, so that's why I imported it just to check out that what all files, I just wanted to show you this files that these are the files which we have uh, put into uh, lib directory and I can utilize this. So the, you don't need to import it at any place. You, uh, either you, uh, you know, import it the way we did it. So let's remove this. So remove. So just refresh it. So you only need to do at one place. Either you do it over here or you do that build path, what we did here. So you need to do only one thing, not both of them. You are absolutely right. Now, there's one question. Hold on. Yes, yeah, Sachin, please speak out. I have unmuted you. You can speak out. Yes, please, Sachin. Okay. So, can we map jar file to a UR pattern might be a lame question? I did not really got your question. Mm -hmm. What do you mean by uh, jar file to a URL pattern? URL pattern is some kind of a string which you need to uh, put over here like the way you abc.dev.html or something like that. Jar file is, uh, you know, take, take examples. Uh, maybe you are building a website and uh, one of your small team has already built the HR module and they have given you that HR module in the form of a jar file. So you want to use that jar file to Further do some more development. So what you do is you put that jar file, hr.jar file over here and use those classes wherever you would like. So that is the purpose of a jar file. Jar file means the classes which has already been built, you don't want to build it again, you want to utilize it. Some of your friend will give those classes in the form of a jar file and you can put it to a new class. Am I clear, Sachin? Okay, great. So there's one few questions. Let's discuss few of the questions. Now here, first question says, which of the following directories are legal location for the deployment descriptor file notepad that all the paths are shown uh, to? What do you think is the right answer over here? Choose two.
B and A. Okay. Others, please, Dishan, Santosh. A and C, A and C, A, C. Okay, I'm getting a lot of answers. Get up. Okay, come on. Now, the first thing is, let's discuss few things. So, it's asking for where, what is the right directory for uh, legal directory for the deployment. Deployment is typically in our web.xml file. So, according to this, our web.xml file is in a folder known as web so according to this web hynef and in this directory I will have a file name known as so according to this web hynef so here I have web.xml and just wanted to show you I will not be able to show that uh, completely right now but I would like to show you something. So that so here uh, maybe I have created some projects earlier like my command. So this second question says let's look at the second question as well. So the first question, the first answer is clear that it is in a web INF. Uh, And the second question, it says app server installed. App server has been installed in my C directory Tomcat 7. In that Tomcat 7, there is a folder known as web apps. Web apps is a folder. Probably I would have discussed more in the complete class. Web app is a folder where your uh, deployed files get uh, stored. So you have once you have deployed your like uh, uh, you know when you say like my command dot war file. So war file get deployed, it create a folder like this. And in that folder you have a web INF. In that web INF you get a file known as web .x. So the answer right after this is one is A. This I can see when you are de uh, developing it at, at that time. And third answer C answer is when it got deployed. So you have to answer at the development time is A. At deployed time is C. So here the right two answers are A and C. Am I clear? On the chat window, please. Yes, great. One more question. Let's uh, discuss the one more question here. So it says, what would be the best directory in which to store a supporting jar file for a web application? If you want to, if if you want some jar file which need, uh, you know, which you need for your uh, further development of your application, where would you like to store it? Note that in the list below, all the directories begin from the contact suit. Contact suit is the uh, probably you know the name of the project. Where you would store your jar files? Question answer please. On the chat window, you need to only choose one. F F F F F. That's a link directory. Okay. So the answer for that is now. Let me check out this. Uh, let me run this and uh, show you one thing. Here it says localhost eighty two eighty two. That becomes your server. DD underscore demo become your contacts root. So your contacts root is this one. And according to this, where your file need to get stored. So according to okay, let me show this structure as well. Here it is. So here my contacts root is a my command. In my command, I have a folder known as a web INF. So, you know, you need to check out here 
these are the questions directly actually. It says all the directory begin from the context rule. So according to this, context rules either in my case is db underscore demo, then it's my command. So in my command, there is a folder known as bynx, and there probably would have been a folder known as lib here. And in that lib, you will store your job. So the right answer for this is going to be context root. And after that, webinf comes. In webinf, you have a uh, library distribution. So this is a very preliminary question. But yes, this kind of question comes. This uh, file type is actually there. You will get more on this like this when you do this uh, servlet mapping and all. Yes, these kind of questions are absolutely expected in this application. No doubt about it. And uh, that's it. So any other question before I uh, hand over the control to Raj? Any question? Uh, Raj, I think you can uh, uh, take back the access and go ahead. Okay. So this sure, last question. I can take back the access. Yes, one last question. In a single project, we have number of servlets in such cases handling the UI pattern. You are certainly pretty difficult to find. So, is there any alternative? Yes, there are a lot of alternatives. You know, you have web segment, you can break it into multiple pieces, and uh, in, and the rest of the things you can use annotations. So, there are a lot of things which can uh, uh, reduce the size of your web project. I'll find in Java ECs, there are a lot of things which can be done. Yes, it's possible. And it has to be done to be very successful. And we do that. 